Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Seed Story Cup 3. Now joining me, the rising star of the Hearthstone scene. 2015 is his year, that's just what he said to me, and it's Orange. Hello, everybody. Yeah, just joining Team Archon, it's not too long ago. Are you happy with your new team? Oh, yeah, I'm in incredibly happy. It, I've been... Uh like Arkan has been the team I wanted to join for such a long time, and finally getting the opportunity—it's it, it's really awesome. Uh, I enjoy it a lot. Yeah, I'm glad you you're happy at your new team. Uh, is it all clipping for you, and how was it working uh, here for you at the Seed Story Cup? Are you satisfied? Oh yeah, the, the, this cup is great. As I've said plenty of times before, for like house cups is definitely like the best kind of events in my opinion. Uh, I I've had such a great time at every at every cup I've been to, and this is no ex exception. I've had a great time, and also uh, the playing has been going really well, so I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. Did you also play some poker? <laughs> not yet. I'm not a very good poker player, and I'm pretty sure everyone would just wreck me at poker. If oh, I you should it. try to play against Forzen, because Forzen just is, is like, okay, you raised for 10, I will go, mm, like, do I call? I go all in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> well, like well, well, what could possibly go wrong, really? <laughs> and, and nothing is feeling better than winning, like, 200 bucks from Forzen, because he's like, okay, you just want 200 bucks. I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. It, it always feels feel so good. I remember my good friend Freaky last time won like 600 or something from Reynard. And yeah, <laughs> I can imagine that feeling quite good as well. Yeah. Anyway, we got the next game for you in this group. And it's Maverick going up against Masan. Uh, I am told by the... That it's two minutes uh, to go to the game, so we can just go on talking about the Seed Story Cup and how awesome it is. Because oh, yeah. it's also the first time for me to be here. Uh, I can tell the story why I'm actually here. Oh, go on. Uh, because I was also playing the the Open Qualifier, mm. and I was playing against you know Oskaka because you oh, yeah. both uh, I, Swedish people. Yeah, I know him very well. Yeah, and we were in the finals of that cup, so it was either him or me going here. And mm. I was very sad that that he won. But yeah. So I wanted to take the so. chance and still wanted to be here. And I, I just came uh, on Thursday and I was knocking on the door and said, Hey, take. I'm, I'm unknown, but I want to be here. Would Whoa. you let me in? And then I just forced myself on that seat. So that's uh, why I'm casting. But I hope I'm doing a good job. I, I love it. Yeah, for, uh, from what I've seen, uh, you, you've been doing great so far. And I, I really like it to like... Yeah, I'm gonna go here anyway, even though I don't get to play. Oh, awesome. thank you, thank you. That's nice words from you. <laughs> and I just heard we are ready to start to jump into the game. And yep. yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting match. Both these players have been really promising so far in the event. I heard uh, I actually didn't see much of it, but I heard Maverick had an insane match against Live Coach. I heard it too. Yeah, and um, I I just watched the Masan series against Ecop, and uh, yeah, it, it was it was really good. I'm so impressed by how Masan is one of the player that plays like really really quickly when when he plays. Uh, uh, but he still does it very well. Uh, me and me and Hype actually talked about it a bit earlier. Yeah, and we were joking about it before the series, but now we see it. It's a mirror match between two warriors. You were kind of predicting it. Yeah. And there we go. It's uh, Masan here picking the warrior and Maverick picking the warrior himself. So uh, let's see how this works out. Maverick uh, has Harrison Jones already lining up here. Yeah, that, that, that's that's really important card to have. I saw two very interesting cards, or like one card that's pretty interesting and one very interesting card in the Mulligan from Maverick. We did it, didn't even not only see Isera, which is like quite uncommon for Warriors, which like is a card you play a lot for the mirror, but we also saw Faux Reaper, the, you know, the 6-8. Yeah. And that's not a card I've ever seen anyone playing Warrior, so I'm really excited to see how that plays out. Yeah, Faux Reaper, an 8-8. A uh, six eight actually, so it doesn't die to be Jage. Fair reverse eight. No, no, Faux Reaper. Oh, Faux Reaper! You're yeah. talking about Faux Reaper, yeah? The Faux Reaper. Okay, uh, I was wondering because I didn't see the game, so I thought you were <laughs> talking about Fell Reaver, but it's no. Faux Reaver. Okay, yeah, you're right. That doesn't die to BGH. And we just see what the Warriors love to do, is just stacking up armor here. Yeah, we're not gonna see uh, very many interesting things here in the early stages of the game. Uh, both players are mostly just gonna armor up. Like where, where things start happening is from like turn five to seven. Like that's when people actually start doing stuff. Exactly. That's uh, when the sludge barriers come. That's when the emperor Thorison comes. When the shield main comes into play. Exactly. In in this in this mirror, you can't just mindlessly throw throw your cards out. But you really need to like be very conservative with your removal. You have to get like a lot of value even out from your bad cards. 
And uh, yeah, there, there's so much stuff you have to think about in this mirror. You also have to plan uh, towards the potential fatigue uh, fatigue uh, that might come up. It's, it's just so many stuff and a very, very interesting mirror in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. And uh, now Maverick is uh, thinking, do I punish that opponent's Armorsmith by playing an Acolyte of Pain and maybe getting value out of that? Even though that's a bit risky because you might just run into a Fiery War Axe or into a Death Spite by Masan here. But anyway, he goes for it rather than playing his own uh, Death Spite as we see it in the hand and just swings to the face and maybe he gets rewarded for that. We will see. There's a death spite and also with the cruel taskmaster. Uh, exactly. Like uh, we we saw uh, we saw Masan do that uh, last match where, uh, you, or I don't. It, it may not have been a Masan. It, it was it's like you, you just don't play uh, your Arbor Smith uh, if you know that your opponent can play an acolyte of pain and you can't uh, and you can't really take care of it in some kind of way. So you, you know that your acolyte is going to die, but you still do it because. There's like the potential of it drawing those extra cards, and that would be huge. Uh, we uh, we see uh, Maverick with a lot of cards here already, so he d doesn't really need it that like one or two extra cards, so, uh, not, at least not at the moment. And we also see the full reaver that we have been talking about already lining up in Maverick's hand here. But first of all, he goes for the Harrison Jones, taking out the Death Spite and drawing a brawl. Yeah, that also might come in handy in that particular matchup here. Yeah, Harrison on Death Bite is exactly what they want to do. Uh, it's it's a bit like you can get even more value if you do it on a on a turn where your opponent's up for Gromash, but as for now, you just play it and like try to. You, you, like no one is gonna pull far far ahead very soon, so you just try to keep up with like being ahead on cards and like getting value out of your. You're not so good cards. Like we, we see the armor smith here from uh, Masan. That isn't uh, that isn't very high impact. Get get a lot of value together with the with the taskmaster. Exactly, here. and we see the cruel taskmaster coming down, buffing up the armor smith. What stays on the board for Masan here is still a two two buddy and the three one armor smith. Even though Maverick is stacking up twelve armor already, so on turn seven that's very nice here for him. And uh, turn seven play, he has a Thorison, the Emperor Thorison in his hand though. Uh, you could definitely go for that heal. Uh, I don't really see see another uh, play. Yeah, like the, the, you you get s <laughs> so much mana from playing the tires in here. Then again, the, it is one of your key cards. Like, it, yeah. like you, you just like what you want to do with tires is like pull ahead, and that's not really happening. So you, you just go for like the most value here, and like despite uh, threatening to just uh, kill off the arms with the whirlwind effect. Uh, is, is is really good value, uh, but uh, Masan knows this, so he just doesn't play anything to uh, like just get him for free like over and over again. Totally. He also keeps the charge on the weapon. He uses uh, Maverick uses the cruel Taskmaster to take out the Armorsmith, then goes for Emperor Thorithan. This turn, it's also hard for for Masan to take that out. He would have to run into that and use an execute if he does not draw into a shield slam. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, you could also go Cruel Taskmaster Execute, that's another option here. Uh, what, what Masan did here was, uh, or what Maverick did here was that he forced Masan to use one of the key cards in the matchup. And uh, th that's, that, that's just what you're looking to do. You do not really, you do not really take uh, like the Cruel Taskmaster and Armor Smiths and stuff into account when you play this matchup, but all you have to like keep track of is of is what key cards your opponent, what what key cards you you have played and what key cards your opponent has played. For example, like Ysir is a key card, Sylvanas is a key card, the Shield Slams and Executes are key cards. Those yeah. are the cards you really want to keep track of. Especially, that's another important point. As you as you mentioned, the players uh, are not taking notes, as I see from here. So it already also comes down to who who can keep in mind what has been played so far, because that's very important in a ma matchup. You can't be mistaken by just okay. Do I have seen one or two executes? That's very crucial in that game. Yeah, exactly. It comes down to these turns where you're you're like, is my threat safe? What what can my opponent have to answer this threat and uh, and such? Or like, uh, what do I have left if I use this shield slam on, on this card? Uh, so yeah, like I'll, I'll, everything like that is stuff you really want. Need to Another think. interesting thing for me is a Maverick. How did he manage to uh, put something out for the foe reaver here? Uh, yeah, it's 
Because so, you don't have so much space in the control warrior. The list is pretty pretty clutch, you know. And then putting something out. Do you think he cut it like something like Alex Straza? Yeah, probably. I would guess so because we also saw Sierra, which which means that it goes for more of a like uh, a value value plan than uh, for like a bursty plan with Alex Straza. Uh, I've seen it tides of time is basically the only player I've seen do that, but there are players experimenting with actually cutting Bromash from the deck. Like if, okay. they, if they if they cut Alex Rasa, which is like a big big part of like killing your opponent out of nowhere thing. Yeah. It, like they, they think like, yeah, I might, might as well cut Gromash, but I would not think that Maverick has went that far. But yeah, we see all these like big legendaries, so he has to cut something. I'm I'm 99 percent sure that uh, Alex Rasa is one of them. I expect that as well. So we just see a lot of sludge belchers entering the board. <laughs> so it's the party of belchers here. Maverick well, has two of them and uh, Masan has one of them. So I think the party of belchers, uh, the prize goes to Maverick here. Even though he loses one in the trade into Masan's belcher as well. And next up we might see... Well, what's what's your next play here for, for Masan? You could go Sylvanas. Mm. And yeah, by drawing that Acolyte of Pain, it's it's also pretty nice because you can put two minions on the board. One Brawl is already out. Well, it's, it was the Brawl by Masan. But saturating the board is always pretty nice. Going for Isara or just Alexstrasza might get easily taken out by either a Shield Slam or an Execute. So he's just trying to keep up with Maverick yeah, here. I, I like the Sylvanas because it really guarantees that he just gets something out of it. Even though it might just be a 1-2 Slime. Uh, maybe even more but one thing that is really important to note is that he could have saved sylvanas and because he haven't used the coin yet which we see in his hand he could have actually saved the sylvanas uh, until he drew the brawl and had a good uh, turn for the brawl because that's one one huge uh, power play in the matchup to play sylvanas coin brawl but i, I don't hate the sylvanas here i think it's pretty good uh, you really want to uh, set up some kind of removal for either on either Sylvanas or whatever it steals uh, to uh, to make room for like your Doctor Boom, Alex Strauss and Lucera. Yeah, totally. But Maverick can counter that Sylvanas with his own Sylvanas if he wanted to. But we see him go for Alex Straza here and bringing down Masan to well, right now it's 24 HP here. Qu quite aggressive, uh, especially when uh, he doesn't like you're leaving him. Like a, a Sylvanas up that could uh, potentially steal your uh, Alex Rasa, which you're not happy of. Like, let's say if there's there's a brawl or something, but uh, and and you don't have like the Gromash in uh, in in your hand. Uh, also, I was wrong about him uh, about him cutting Alex Rasa. He has placed it all. I'm really curious how what Maverick's uh, board list looks like because right now it just seems to be like 40 cards or something with, of all the stuff he's playing in the deck. Totally, both players already down to 11 cards in the deck, so we are pretty much through that uh, Voria mirror match here. Just 11 cards to go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, letting uh, it like for Masan to be letting. Uh, I mean, I guess there's not much you can do about it, but letting uh, Ma Maverick get in for a hit with Alex Rasad is pretty huge because eight damage after he got Alex Rasad is like before Alex Rasad doesn't really matter that much. But after Alex Strauss, it's actually like not very good to get hit for And eight. you were nearly predicting it. There we go. Alex Stra uh, Sylvanas steals a slime. And after that brawl, the board is pretty much cleared. Even though Masson has a nice way here to set up a, a turn for himself. He just goes for some more armor. Yeah, it, that, that's going to backfire really hard on Maverick if like this, uh, if the Alex Strauss has arrived. Because then he would have to use the BJH, which is like really, really high value in the matchup. But yeah, luckily for Maverick, just the slimes arrived. So now, now, now you're looking really good if you're Maverick. Especially you also have like you have two removal spells left. So totally, and still the surprising foe reaver. If if Masan does not know about that, and he does not know about it because yeah. I was playing poker with him when uh, Life Coach and Maverick oh. were playing. So he was unable to see about that, and he might be a bit surprised once that foe reaver comes down. De definitely, I'm really looking forward to seeing my son's face when uh, he eventually plays that. Um, you, you also know from uh, how how my son has played, like that it didn't kill Alex and such that he is low on removals in hand. 
So actually gamming this Sylvanas here, I, I don't like it that much because it just dies to the board. And it's not getting that much value. I, I would like to get more value out of out of Sylvanas than like a shield min and a slam. And that's and a very interesting turn for me here because he keeps the Iron Beak out and I really like to go with that choice because you easily trade it into that Sylvanas. Yeah, the, the, there is really, really like... Sylvanas is one of the premier targets for Owl, but at, at that point there was just like no point in using it because you could uh, trade, like you could just send them both in. Yeah, and now we will see Maverick go for the big game hunter here, taking out that Alex Ross and going for even more armor. It, it will stack up to like 26 armor if he uses his armor up, what he does. So now 26 armor, that's uh, pretty huge. We have seen more already because uh, warriors can really get out of control, but that's still very, very much health points here. Yeah, the, it's like the, those, the damage that Alex Ross did doesn't look all that significant all of a sudden. Uh, because there's just way too much armor stacked up. Uh, Mas Masan really has to go for like the fatigue game here because there's no way he can like kill his opponent in a normal way with the cards he has available, and uh, he really needs like last. He really needs to get the last threat on the board. And but, and meanwhile, like he's not very he's not very high on life, so he needs to also survive. Which I, I would say Maverick is a pretty huge favorite at. And you were also also mentioning fatigue, so I'm keeping track of that. And Masan just has six cards left in his deck, whereas Maverick is still on eight cards. Uh, has both players used uh, both their Acolyte of Pains already? I'm pretty sure that Masan has used both of them. But w when you get to this point, uh, like the Acolyte of Pain just gets like becomes a totally dead card that you never want to play in this spot when yeah. you know the, the game is going to fatigue. Wow, but Masan here goes lucky. He gets the Isera and Awakens. Uh, I guess in every case you want Isera Awakens because it's just the best card coming out of Isera. And he gets rewarded for playing Isera this turn. Yeah, it's definitely the best uh, the, the best card you can get. He, he knows that this is going to get be met by a removal spell. But uh, something has to get get hit by a removal spell and might as well be Isera. So... He just wants to get him out like out of Maverick's hand one by one. Interesting for me though is that he goes for Dr. Boom into that Death Spite instead of uh, Foe Reaper. Yeah, uh, you, you, uh, I'm also surprised with that. Personally, I would have played, uh, played, uh, played Foe Reaper myself, but I'm certain that like Maverick knows what he's doing. I'm gonna ask him about that. Yeah, uh, even after the match. even it's not really clear why he plays the Foe Reaper and how why he values it so much. Well, it's a big minion. It stays out of out of range. It's a six nine, so you can't use your big game hunter to clear it. But to me, it doesn't. I I don't really get the sense in the in uh, the warrior. Yeah, uh, I. I don't know. Uh, I'm like Maverick is ahead on cards, so he can e play the shield block, even though he, uh, it, like, even though they both know at this point that it's gonna go to fatigue. Uh, I don't really know what he's uh, stressing to draw, draw, draw into, but uh, yeah. Uh, he oh, there, there comes the Sierra too. Uh, I, I would actually just play a Sierra here. Uh, Masada has been showing a lot of weakness when it comes to uh, removal, and uh, that it doesn't have that much. So this is where I might actually just stick if uh, if Masada doesn't top deck a removal spell of some sort. He gets an Emerald Drake out of the Isera, so that's also a nice card here for him. Even though you always want the Isera Awakens, as we pointed out earlier, but the Iron Beak Owl is very decent here, dealing with that Isera, and also Lilithub establishing some other board position here. Is is here is really not like is is not really what you want to use Iron Beak Owl because yeah you sure you dealt with uh, like every card the yeah. card every turn but uh, in this case Masan had no more. options it's still a five twelve buddy I agree to that so you definitely want to execute it or something like that but in this case the Owl was his only choice to deal with it yeah uh, yeah he, he couldn't do much about it and uh, Maverick certainly got reward for just playing this era there. Uh, Masan decides to draw another card. Not sure if I like that. Uh, I would probably just let something suck up the second hit and like play, bite the bullet and play uh, uh, Harrison as a 5 4. But yeah, uh, and using the BJ on a card created by Sierra is, yeah, it, it, this is looking good for Masan. I don't think there's 
much of a coming back from this point. Yeah, uh, you could have also thought about the Isera Awakens here and then trade into the 4-7, uh, which would then ha just have been a uh, 4-2. So you could have traded that away with your fiery, uh, fiery war axe, and uh, with the owl, you would have had a complete board <laughs> clear. That actually doesn't work because Isera Awakens damages everything oh, but yeah. Isera, oh, yeah. and it doesn't remember that it's your Oh, Isera. ladies and gentlemen, it's getting late in here, and <laughs> <laughs> really, it's Isera. It doesn't. It doesn't damage Isera. Yeah. Very yeah. stupid. Yeah, but, but very, very corner case scenario. It doesn't come up much. That yeah. It doesn't damage your opponents in Sarah. But yeah, here we actually see it mattering. And uh, but yeah, my son is doing a good job working on that. Is here. It's just a four-two at this point, so he's probably gonna die next turn. But then again, you still have so many threats in your opponent's deck left to deal with. So I, I, I'd say it's looking grim for my son. Yeah, totally. He, he totally needs the last uh, last threat to stick. Like if he can. If he can get like the Gromash or like the Shield Maiden on the board unanswered and like hit him, uh, hit him every turn while your opponent is fatiguing, like yeah, that that is what he needs to do. But I find it really hard for him to actually uh, actually be successful with that plan. Finally, we see Maverick going for the Foe Reaper here. Yeah, uh, with these are the cards uh, Masano gets left to win the game with. Uh, it's. Yeah, I, I I don't see it like for myself. He, can, he have a he has a pretty good Azera Awakens here, uh, which takes out the uh, Foe Reaper. But uh, you kind of you, maybe you even just want to use the Shield Slam before because you're gonna start losing armor due to fatigue. And if you play that Azera Awakens, you lose five armor just because of that. So yeah, I'd, I'd probably just go with the Shield Slam on the Foe Reaper here and save the Awakens. But yeah, with with it, we, we see the Shield Slam and the two executes in your in uh, Maverick's hand. Uh, Masan knows about that there's two uh, executes left in somewhere in uh, Maverick's deck, so he, he, he can't really play the Gromash and try to just cheese him with that. Uh, yeah, we, we see... Uh, we see the Death Spite being drawn here by Maverick. He can use that to, to take control over the board. He does not really care about face tanking here with 26 armor. Definitely not. Uh, at, at this point, you have three removal spells in hand against your... Opponents one is Sarah card. Uh, you you know there's still the coin in the hand. Yeah, and if he uh, yeah if he kept track of that, he it, knows the coin is there, and it, I expect him to do so. Yeah, I expect people of this level to keep track of that stuff. You also know there's a Gromash left because it hasn't been used, and you should know there's also like just yeah you, you should basically know Masan's hand at this point. Yeah, and yeah, uh, if you know it, it's definitely just safe to use the Shield Slam there. So I, I expect that we're gonna. Uh, there's the last acolyte of pain that I talked about, which being a totally dead card at this point. But we see you, uh, Masan doesn't have an answer to the Gromash really in uh, Maverick's hand, so that is just gonna win him the game. Yeah, exactly. So I also see the victory here for Maverick coming up. <laughs> it's just a matter of time until we see mm -hmm. that. So uh, both players are still very concentrated, and Masan is also fancying his chances here. Yeah. But we know Maverick's hand, and he could already uh, also think about the hand that Maverick has got here. He goes for the Gramash, will maybe take out the slime. Actually, the funny thing here is that <laughs> Masana has to use his Gramash to kill that Gramash. Or I guess he could use, like, yeah, he can go, like, Gramash Awakens and War Axe the other Gramash. But then again, you know about those two executes. Yeah. And like yeah, even if let's let's say the both Gromash dies, like th th that's when actually the Acolyte and Cruel Taskmaster will just come into play and like hit hit uh, Masan over and over for free each turn, and that will guarantee to win the fatigue game. You could also you do not have to enrage your own Gromash because with eight damage you can take care of that and leave your Gromash unenraged. Uh, so your opponent would have to use the Cruel Taskmaster and the Execute then one turn later. But in the end, it does not matter because either way the Gromash is going to die, and just a coin is not going to win you the game. Yeah, yeah, there is there's certainly a good call there to. Uh to, to leave the Gromash unenraged because uh, both Shield Slams are gone and you know there's just two executes. You should know about the Cruel Taskmaster that activates it. But. Yeah, as it looks, Masan still fancies to win here. He goes for the Gromash first. He doesn't uh, leave it unenraged. Uh, unenraged. He wants to enrage it as it looks. Goes for Isara Awakens. Uses the current dis uh, coin this turn to armor up once more. W with perfect information, it is correct to uh, enrage it. Like. If you know, if Maverick is playing with his hand face up, it's better to enrage it. 
But yeah, this is where you see. It's gonna play them in the order like Rule Taskmaster and then Accolade to Pain because it because it doesn't want to draw a card because yeah, that just fatigues him further. Exactly, and now I just expect uh, Masan to concede yeah. here because it makes no sense. He loses the fatigue game and also gets three damage every turn, so there's no reason for him to stay in the game any longer. And yes, he's nice to us. He concedes, and that was the Warrior Mirror match here, and it goes in favor of Maverick, who goes one, uh, who goes up one zero in that series. Yeah, I, I like how both players play that. Uh, Masan got a bit on like. Uh, unlucky with having, I, I don't know, a bit unlucky with where his removal spells were, and maybe he used them a bit too uh, aggressively. But uh, yeah, it was certainly an interesting match. Uh, lots of things to be taken into consideration, uh, getting learned from that match. But uh, I think that both players played it uh, quite well, and uh, you, you saw Maverick with a slightly greener list, uh, probably had an edge. And yeah, managed, managed to win that game, which is a very important game for the series, uh, I would think. Exactly, and now up here for Masan, he still has all his three decks, the Paladin, the Warrior and the Mage. Maverick is down to Druid and Rogue. So if Maverick runs with his Rogue into the Warrior by Masan, we are probably going to see a victory for Masan, I guess. Yeah, so what, what I'd, I'd expect to happen is that uh, Maverick chooses the Druid and that Masan knows that Maverick will choose the Druid and actually just cho chooses Mage depending on what kind of Mage it is. Although, exactly, I also uh, expect the same and there we go, Maverick goes with his Druid and Masan picks the Mage. Okay, we and actually see good hands from both players here. Like uh, Maverick does have the coin wild growth uh, into Wrath into Keeper, which is definitely what you want against the aggressive style of Mech Mage. Uh, it's it's very very unfavor unfavorable for Maverick here, but uh, he he can certainly he, he can certainly get through if he has a good hand. Uh, like Druid is just this uh, deck that has like a lot of unfavorable matchups, but because you have like. So, so many unfair draws, you can just win any of them. Yeah, totally. And now we see Masan going for the turn two Mad Scientist, and that is probably going to be followed up by Maverick here with the Wild Grove being played. And then I'm pretty sure we are going to see Mech Warper into a Neutron. Yeah. You, or no. Oh, bro, well, not. the Snow Chugger changes the situation a bit, even though I would still like to see the Neutron, to be honest here. Uh, yeah, th th this is the thing. Uh, why uh, why Mech Mage is so favored in this matchup is because uh, while you need your early turns to set up, like where you need to cast Wild Groves and such early, uh, your opponent just plays threats. And as Druid, you don't have great ways of catching up from behind. Like Swipe is probably your best one. Uh, which is not very effective against Mech Mage even. Um, <coughs> excuse me. That just uh, so that just makes it they can just snowball the board and there's no way for Druid to really get get back if they just keep a uh, good board control over. Exactly. Going on. Also, always crucial in this matchup that freeze by the Snow Chugger, not using the hero ability to pop something like the Anoitron. So it's just a combination of the Snow Chugger and the Anoitron that makes the Anoitron so annoying in this oh, yeah. matchup. Uh, exa exactly. You you uh, usually just want to uh, hero power the Divine Shield, but you can't. And uh, like th this is one of the catch up plays, like where you try to fight from behind, just taunting the Druid or the Claw. Then you again see the you see, perfect the answer here e exactly. with the fireball, just burning the druid of the claw, and now he can just go on with his march to the face, uh, he, do he, more damage, or even go yeah, for the secret. I really want to set up a trap here. It's uh, it's so important. Like it, it's just really really good against them. Like if you're already ahead, like it's just impossible for druid to get back in it if you also have a have, have a mirror entity up because then they can't play the cards. That are good. Uh, that are good to play when they're behind. Uh, Keeper to grow is pretty good here, especially since you compare it with the Wrath. But I doubt that it's enough. It's already kind of low, and uh, yeah, there's two frost balls, and you have s several points of power on the board. Um, Wow, oh, and there's also whoa. the Pyroblast, and that's a very interesting choice. I was talking about <laughs> that earlier with Ignite sitting here, that uh, the Pyroblast in the Mech Mage somehow makes sense in the late game to really close out the game. It's another 10 damage to the face. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not a big fan of, <laughs> of this card choice, because uh, like it, in 9 out of 10 cases, it's just better to like you just close out the game by having another threat, I'd, I'd say, in the early game. Like, uh, like there are very few scenarios where uh, scenarios where it would be like, yeah, I really need, like, 
Pyro Blast on turn 10. It feels like an optimistic card to play by me. It feels like it will uh, screw you over in the early game a lot more than win you the game in the late game. But at this point, it actually looks like it might just close out the game on turn 10. Yeah, it could pay off definitely here because the Druid is now taunting up again with his second Druid of the Claw. And that's definitely stopping the aggression for now. Yeah, the Druid stabilized here. Uh, and can like further advance the board. Uh, what I actually think will happen is that I actually think that Maverick got this game now. He can play two threats this turn and like probably two threats with the. Uh, you Drake really say next he got this game now, even though we see the Pyroblast that comes in in just three turns? He needs to heal up. He, no, he won't have enough time. He will be dead before then. Yeah. Okay. Right. With the with the Savage Roar here, but yeah. Still, it's gonna be very close. Also, Masan can still draw into a lucky fireball. He was doing that just in the last series. So the luck is on the side of this little agent here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, d d definitely. Like a fireball will, will, fireball will close out the game. But with the cards that are available at this po point, I'd say that Maverick is favored. Uh, he does one thing here, which is correct, but is incorrect in like in this, like, with perfect information, which is that he uses the hero power instead of playing the shade uh, to play around the second fireball. But, uh, like, what, what he really needs here because of the Pyro Blast that he should never expect is to uh, uh, is, is just that once the board and try to kill him. Um, that taunt is also really valuable because it uh, it stops Maverick from uh, uh, from getting in for more damage. Yeah, totally. And now he's right now thinking about playing the Frostbolt on that 2-3, uh, I guess. Because yeah. you want to take another threat off the board. Like, uh, my son is thinking about something here. It, it is the Frostbolt for sure, but if he's going to use an, if he's gonna use it or something here. Uh, personally, I would just save it here and uh, not use it. it. It could be like an Ancient of Lore that's coming and then you want to use it on the face. And yeah, I don't really like. Yeah, this is certainly like a play you're afraid of dying on, uh, on the turn following this one. Yeah, exactly. He's freezing the druid of the claw here, bringing it down to, to three HP, and <laughs> it looks like his game plan now is survive until the pyroblast comes in. Yeah, d d definitely. Uh, he straight up loses to ancient lord though, which is pretty risky in my opinion, especially since. Maverick got a couple of draws to actually draw into it. And uh, that Dr. Boom is very crucial at this point because of the two Boom bots, you have three minions that are affected by the Savage Roar here and that's so much damage coming in if Masson does not draw into a proper way to deal with that and I don't even see that coming. Exactly. Like, uh, let's say in this game, if that Pyro Blast just was another threat, uh, I think that uh, Masan would very easily won this. Not very easily, but he would have probably won this. You see your opponent being, like, really low, and you could also, like, uh, you had free extra damage with the Frostbolt that you just used. Uh, if he just had another threat before your opponent stabilized, that'd just be great. And uh, I think he's gonna die the next turn. Or, I ha haven't done the math, but it certainly looks like it if it doesn't draw Probably something here. Even drawing the fireball that would not really Whoa. help him out here. That and is the worst draw. Yeah, clockwork gnome. So, so he, he just prays that there's no savage draw or uh, no uh, kind uh, of combo. Actually, actually, you can freeze the boom here, which is what it does. And then I don't think it's lethal anymore. Really? Let's calculate. I didn't calculate it through. So you got 10 damage off that Savage Roar, and then you got 15, 17 damage. You're right. And yeah, that would be game. That is actually the game. Like, Maverick... Ma what could Ma Maverick, Maverick, Maverick it, it, draw like into here with that Azure Drake? What would be an option? He draws into the Innervate, so that's not really helping him out here, that late game uh, Innervate. Yeah, if, if he... Yeah, scenarios plus uh, innervate savage or would have killed him. But uh, yeah, I, I would. Maverick is probably gonna be really upset. And here another interesting thing, yeah, that is, uh, you don't expect the pyroblast yeah, to come he, here. You're playing against the mech mage, so Maverick will definitely be he, upset. And I look at him; he's sitting in front of his PC now. He's very chilled, but now he sees the pyroblast and is like, "Okay, well, you just won that game." Yeah, like you, you certainly don't expect that. I would be. I, w I would be a bit upset if I were Maverick because you, I, I would certainly think that I had that game uh, when when I met like eight life your opponent is two frost balls and uh, a fireball already. Uh, and that means the equalizer between our two players. It is 1-1 one, one now between Maverick and Masan here. Maverick winning the first game with his warrior and then losing with his druid to Masan's mage. Yeah, 
it I really uh, it's really good for uh, Masan to get a win with his mage because it's not very good against the rogue I'd say. Uh, and uh, like it's not good against warrior, but that is already out. But getting a win with your mage uh, with these lineups is actually quite quite important, I'd say. Um, we see we see Masa now with paladin and warrior left against druid and rogue. Uh, it's getting getting to quite a guessing game because like paladin is favored against druid, but it's not favored against rogue. Like warrior is uh, unfavored against druid, but favored against rogue. And it looks like Masan is winning that game because he picks the paladin into Maverick's druid. Certainly, uh, th this is this is exactly what it, it actually just became like a coin flip here, like uh, what you wanted to like for for both players. But then again, we see Maverick with another amazing druid hand. It, 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 here, I think you should sequence it so, so you innervate the shade on this turn. Then next turn you wild growth, and then turn after that you coin the druid of the claw and then play another druid of the claw. So I think we see some miss sequencing here from Maverick, but yeah, uh, in the end, it's, he, it's still good. He's, like he's, that, he's gonna but... get, no, he's gonna get super punished by this because your opponent gets to play a knife juggler. If you now like, you have to wrath here because if you play the shade of Naxxramas and your opponent has to follow up muster. Uh, your uh, your shade just dies, but if you actually just play the shade first, uh, it's a very very low pos possibility of that actually happening. Okay, I agree to you. So slight mistake here by Maverick, uh, misplaying that a bit, but he goes for the druid of the claw now, and is uh, threatening here that uh, knife juggler. And we see the master for battle come down. It all comes down to those juggles. They have to hit the druid of the claw pretty heavily here. One goes to the face, though. The second one hits. Uh, the third one hits, so he can't take care of that. And as we know, there's no swipe to take care of the of the silver hand recruits here, yeah. so he's maybe fancying that Raph to take out one and his hero ability to take another one out. Th that that was really, really important for Masan to get the two hits on the Druid of the Claw, uh, because now now Maverick is on the back foot and uh, Masan gets to have initiative, and as I said earlier, like as soon as the uh, Druid falls behind, it gets like, it gets really messy for them. Wow, and he draws into a second two drop on turn four, so he can't play the shield with minibot and the knife juggler in one turn, establishing another nice board for him here. N not, not as great here because, you know, there's the wrath and the uh, shade coming, but it's it's certainly like. It's, it's certainly good. Uh, I, I'm not sure if this is enough for uh, Maverick to uh, get ahead, though. We, we see the Belcher here which uh, Maverick doesn't really have a good answer to. So uh, I'd say that, like, I actually think that if uh, Maverick just sequenced it the way I suggested in the beginning, I think it'd be in, like, amazing shape because that's just a great, great curve against Paladin and one that they have really hard time dealing with. But because of how he sequenced it, all his plays has been, like, a bit awkward. And, uh, yeah, like, Masan is a heavy favorite from here on, I'd say. Yeah, I would agree to that. Uh, definitely your play suggestion would have put Maverick in a total another spot here. Uh, he draws into the swipe though by that Azur Drake. Cannot use it this turn because he's out of mana and... Massa now goes for the Consecration as it looks. He can easily take care of that Azur Drake with his shielded mini bot. G gets a, 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 a 4 damage. Uh, a divine shield is definitely nothing to be sa sad about, and just, just, just pushing the board like, the, I, I can't a, 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 like s say that too many times how important it is to just get ahead on the board against Druid. Like, you should do everything in your power to just like ha have board position against them because they have such a hard time. Yeah, totally. I'm all also stressing it in every single Druid game. The Druid has to have board control, and if you're ahead on the board against the Druid, you're favored to win the match, because there's just no removal. We do see the swipe here, though, and he is taunting up for now with the Druid of the Claw, but maybe Masan already fancies the Quartermaster that might come down next turn with maybe the hero ability, so three buffed up Silverhand recruits. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing to think about. It, this is just so beautiful to have a Quartermaster buff up three minions and also really efficiently. Just training away one token. Oh, he actually trades away both to keep himself a bit higher in life. Uh, but at 26, I would not be afraid. Uh, but yeah, he could have just traded the mean button and uh, got the one hit from his weapon in there. Uh, but yeah, uh, 
from here on, he's like just a couple of damage of lethal. That Aldor <laughs> Peacekeeper is really good to answer the boom. I also like the Aldor uh, Peacekeeper uh, here. Uh, and you can just keep going face. He's He should probably send the slime into a boom bot, I'd say. Just to not uh, give Masan more control of how to use his boom bots. Uh, but yeah, he decides to just go face. Like when in doubt, just go face. I guess that's a good plan. Uh, Tyrion here. Uh, is just gonna lock up the game, and uh, yeah, Masan is gonna go up 2-1 two, two, against Maverick in a matter of seconds. Yeah, totally, that's it. We see the last plays here of that game, and uh, Maverick is taking his time, I guess, because he knows he's pinned against the wall and he's facing defeat here, so... Uh, once more, taking his time, thinking about what is the best play in this, uh, in this situation here. But basically, if there's any way to survive, survive and, like, it, you have to, like, Take the, the perfect boom bots as well. You can use your Harrison Jones, and yeah, you need perfect boom bots. You need to hit for four on that quartermaster. Actually, uh, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, you can you, hit you, it you twice, can, yeah, you, sure. You, you can hit, hit it twice, but yeah, stuff has to go right. Okay, the first bomb hits face, so he's and down to low chances, and wow! Oh, he, he gets there, he gets there, and you know wow. there's no direct damage from uh, Maverick, because he would have just killed you last turn. Wow, that's a crazy bombs here, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. Now the Elder Peacekeeper comes in, taking care of Harrison Jones. And let's see, can Maverick even stay in that game a bit longer? Ma wow, Masson even goes for the zombie chow here. Maverick is making me feel extremely silly for saying that we're going to see a concession in a, in a matter of seconds. <laughs> and do, do you know what? Uh, Maverick is one damage of lethal right here with the combo, uh, which is really absurd. We see... I'm swinging the game re really well with that uh, Harrison. Unfortunately, he's oh, five oh, damage right, off lethal. Oh, oh, right. It's the, uh, yeah, I, but I, I, I forgot about Aldor. You can actually silence his uh, Harrison Jones here, kill the zombie shell, and I think he has a good... Sh yeah, uh, yeah, so what it does here is like the Keeper silences the Harrison Jones. It goes back to a 5-4. Well, I would uh, suggest using the Keeper of the Grove on the Aldor Peacekeeper to damage, then run your Harrison Jones into the big game hunter is also an option, and you have a nice wipe then. Uh, yeah, but, but you, you, can, you can clear the board, although you have to hero power the big game hunter, but which isn't a big deal since you heal for 5. Mm, uh, I would say it's a big deal because you don't want to run into, into a... Truth of a champion here, uh, but he, he decides to do it like that and will drop down to six, uh, so uh, you would die to uh, Consecration True Silver. Th th this is still, yeah, you know there's none of that stuff in your opponent's hand, so you basically just play around the top deck one. Uh, I, I think like having the five power on board, like you, you know there's no di direct damage in your opponent's hand, right? Because yeah. he would have just killed you. Uh, and uh, ha having a five power uh, minion on board would be like really valuable if your opponent plays, for say example, a Sludge Belcher. Like with, uh, like if, if he just uh, silence the Harrison, kill the zombie, shall swipe the Aldor, and hero power the big game hunter. Sure, he would have been dead to exact tr top deck true silver, but he wouldn't lose like something like this, like say Sludge Filter and Pilot Shredder, which I would think is like more likely that he plays two random minions. So what do we make? Silver. What do we make of that zombie chow? Would you would you have also played it in the, on that spot? Mm, I'm not I'm not entirely sure if I would. Uh, I'm. I, I, that, that's a that, that's a tough one. Uh, not gonna say yes or no, but uh, I think like b building a board is like good. But yeah, the heal for five is certainly. Yeah, Very we powerful. saw Masson just go for Dr. GG entering the board. Dr. Boom coming here. Uh, Maverick does have the nice answer with his uh, own big game hunter. But first of all. He has to take his time and think about what else to play. That Dr. Boom was so clutch for him there. He was actually about to lose this game due to just... Uh, after that Harrison turn with, with the Tyrion, but that Dr. Boom is looks like it might turn this around. But actually, like... Yeah, like that, that Angel Lord gets attacked this turn, right? Then... Yeah, like, uh, I actually think that Maverick still got this, even though it's a top deck doc Dr. Boom. This is like I'm. I'm, I'm just. Uh, it's just amazing how Maverick actually found a way to, uh, like th that. It's even a game out of this after what what we've seen so far in this game. It's really crazy, and I'm really impressed by by Maverick's play and how he navigated this game. Yeah, some survival skills here. <laughs> Certainly, 
Maybe he should do a training scam with Bear Grylls. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. Uh, First of all, he takes some damage off the board. He's left with a big game hunter, Ancient of Lore, and a two yeah. four. Here we go with the draw. Here we go with the boom butts again. Yeah, they're coming in, ladies and gentlemen. Prepare for some crazy hits. Yeah, it, it, it kills off the keeper first, which I like, which I like because it turns the boom butt into just a 50-50. And there's a rule in Hearthstone. Usually, if you want to kill the big game hunter with your boom butts, you do kill the big game hunter with your boom butts. That always happens. <laughs> It, 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 it's true. It's very rare that you see a uh, big game hunter actually connect after it kills a Dr. Boom. And now Maverick is down one damage off lethal. Yeah, it's one damage of lethal again, but uh, actually it's like nothing to worry about here because he's still at 11 life and there are no draws in uh, a Masan's deck that can actually kill him here. So if he just plays Scenarius, which like makes it pretty pretty clear that he will have a body on board next turn. He can I finish think him off with a way here next for, turn. for Masson maybe to also stabilize again and to come back would just be a lay on hands? Uh, lay on hands into equality. Into equality, yeah, but th that's pretty likely to draw into that equality. But first of all, Maverick goes for the scenarios here. And do we see... Well, there, we see there's the true champion. champion that we needed a couple of turns ago. Uh, but like yeah, this, this, this actually heals him for two, so... Yeah, he survives oh, And also, two. if he has the god boom bot... Ah, oh, damn it, it's... What, what, exactly if, three if, if damage. The, if the boom bot hit for four, that would just be... Oh yeah, that that would be so insane. Yeah, four and two to face. That's what Massa needed here. But then I, we see... Oh yeah, that low feb is really good. Uh, Masan is uh, Maverick is always like one or two damage off lethal uh, w from what we can see here, and it, it's such a close game. This this one. Yeah, it's a very nice game here between the Druid by Maverick and between the Paladin by Masan. We oh, will that shade. probably yeah, that shade perfectly fits the curve with Lothab if we wanted to, but uh, he oh, goes yeah. for the hero power because he wants to stay out of lethal range in combination with a consecration maybe being oh, top decked by Masson. Or, or a quartermaster. It's definitely correct to you you, you won this game like uh, uh, no matter what, so it is definitely correct to just hero power there. Exactly, he takes out that scenarius eventually. Uh, um, and Maverick just finishes Fini uh, spoiler alert, but he's gonna finish him off with the combo. And <laughs> oh, spoiler alert! <laughs> and, 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 and like it, it's really crazy because I said that we gotta see a concession from Maverick, and he somehow turns this game around and wins in like such an unfavorable matchup. So with, you learned a uh, lesson today. Don't be too early with your concession calls. Absolutely. Uh, some really impressive play by Maverick, uh, beating Masan goes up two to one. And this is so, so much more to that, because this means that uh, he actually, like, Maverick just got uh, his rogue left, and Masan has to play his paladin. Again, yeah, Masan like, has Ma to play Ma his Masan paladin to, eventually. Yeah, and uh, from uh, from being qu quite an experienced rogue player myself, I can say that uh, as, a, as a rogue, uh, the paladin matchup is extremely favored. Yeah. And... Uh, but first, first of all, we're gonna probably see Masan just picking his warrior, because that deck is very, very good against uh, Rogue instead. So, w what I predict, if I was were to predict something right now, is that uh, it's gonna go to two-two from uh, Masan winning against the Rogue with the warrior, but then that uh, Maverick is very, very likely to win the Paladin game against the Rogue. Yeah, we will keep your prediction in mind. We are jumping into the game now. As you predicted, Maverick has to go up with his Rogue and uh, Masan chooses his Warrior. We can see the cards of both players now. And what do we make of the hand here by both players? Uh, Maverick has the hand you want. Maverick has, like, this is extremely, extremely unfavored for Maverick, this matchup. But if, if, if I could pick out the hand in this matchup, this is very very close to it like I, I would pick almost exactly this hand like you really want to prep sprint on turn four uh, and just grind him out with card advantage which also makes like the follow-up uh, asher drake really really good and how, how you win is letting your opponent get no value out of their acolyte of pains like for example here you can just hit it and yeah they, they'll get one card but they always get that but if they if they don't get more than one card, you're like extremely happy. And if you can just outvalue them with uh, with sprint and rakes and stuff, and uh, eventually they run out of this stuff to do, while you have have a friend or so that can uh, that can pick pick their damage and armor off. 
that's really what you want to do. Yeah, exactly. And we see the Acolyte of Pain being taken out here. Massa and places his Fiery War X. He got two of them. Well, one is in the hand now, one is on the board. He armors up, has a three armor stacked up here. And then the turn once more goes to Maverick here, who might just go for a low step to establish a nice board position. Uh, m m makes a lot of sense. You kind of want to... Uh you, you want you want to be able to contest the Sludge Belcher that is uh, Warrior's strongest turn 5 play. And since his last turn was so weak, uh, with just the Fire Warrix and Armor up, you know that uh, Masan's hand, like, it, it has to contain something, and it's not an early game drop, so it probably has a good 5 drop, and the best 5 drop is Sludge Belcher, so therefore you just play the low fib because it contests the Sludge Belcher so well. Totally uh, agreed. Yeah, and uh, here we can see... Uh, yeah, oh, okay. uh, this is really good. This this not only keeps uh, it keeps the Lothar out of execute range because it doesn't have to attack into uh, attack into, into the, yeah, exactly. But it also removes the armor, so shield slam, uh, if not in combination with the shield block, becomes very, very inefficient. Yeah, a very nice Talnos here entering the board with the... <laughs> With the Eviscerate, but we see a very important card in this matchup being drawn here for Masan. It's the Harrison Jones lining up in his hand. Yeah, yeah uh, it, actually, uh, Masan's hand has been turning out really well with the last couple of draws. But like the Shield Buck, Shield Flam, and also the Harrison, which is uh, probably the, uh, the second to most important card in the matchup, with Death Spite probably being your most important one. Uh, Maverick keeps it up, like, he just keeps the pressure up, uh, applying two semi-good threats at a time, uh, forcing uh, forcing Masan to have the right answers at the right time. Uh, uh, so far he does, but, uh, you know, you also see, like, so many threats in Maverick's hand, so you know that eventually he will run out of them. Uh, I really like uh, that Masan uh, plays the Sylvanas in this spot, because uh, Sylvanas' one big weakness in the matchup is the card we see draw drawn right there from Averick, which is Sap. But since you're not under that much pressure, you can just try to, uh, like, mm. the, you know, there's just two Saps in the deck, right? Yeah. And, like, it, it, if your opponent doesn't have that much pressure, you can just replay Sylvanas two times after it getting sapped. Totally, and that's uh, what Massa, Massan is uh, thinking here. And Maverick swings to the face for another 4 damage, bringing down the Warrior to 24 HP. We do have two Tinker Shop Sword Oils, a Blade Flurry, and another Deadly Poison. So there's also a lot of damage lining up in Maverick's hand. Adding up to that, an Eviscerate. So uh, now Massan has to be very careful. If, there is, if, if uh, Maverick draws the second preparation, is very likely to just win on the spot. That is so I much no damage. And uh, oh yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's see. Ha whoa, I this might be lethal. I haven't done the math, but l okay. So let let's count. Let's this calculate. Up. So I actually think this is lethal. Six damage. It's twelve damage. It's fourteen damage. It's fifteen, seventeen, twenty-one. It's one damage off lethal. If no, I no, oh did, yeah, did, you did you account for uh, also did you account for the spell power? No, I didn't. I didn't. I did not do the play with the Blade Whoa. Flurry and the Eviscerate, so it's good not to play the, the second Tinker Shop sort of, and that's lethal here, so Maverick wins the unfavorable matchup in some style. Really impressive. This is uh, this is what uh, most people say is uh, uh, Rogue's most unfavorable matchup, and we see Maverick not even like just narrowly closing it out, he's convincingly winning th this match against Masan. Yeah, w very well played. Yeah, he, he he had what he needed and he also executed it really, really well. Uh, I'm I'm impressed by how both players play the series, but Ma Maverick, he's been showing a lot of promise in his, his two matches so far. Yeah, but also, as you said, uh, if you had to choose some cards against going up against uh, Voria in that unfavorable matchup, it was nearly that hand. He had the 5-drop oh, yeah. with the Azure Drag, he had the prep sprint on turn 4, so he had a very good hand here. And yeah. as you said, perfect execution here by Maverick, so congratulations to you, Maverick. Yeah. And also, thank you, Orange, for casting with me. Thanks a lot. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I hope so. So the next matchup is going to be Life Coach against... Uh, who was the loser of the last match? Life Coach against... Uh, Life Coach against No, Masan just played. No, yeah, it's, it's the loser's match. No, the loser's match was... Uh, uh, it was played off stream. So, so it's the, win uh, okay, it's the it winner between Ekop and... Ekop, yeah, Ekop and Life Coach. Uh, uh, who was the winner of that? Life Coach. 
Life Coach was the winner. Okay, so we saw that off stream. So Life Coach is gonna go up against Massa and in the decider match. So get nice ready for that, and we will go into a short break, and we'll be right back after that break. See you, everyone.